Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I am going to do some playing with color with the new Ellen Hudson release. I've been having fun lately pushing colors to their limits and seeing what they can do. So today I decided to get out some French ultramarine blue and Aussie red gold and see how they mix, what kind of colors they make together, and then throwing in occasionally some nickel azo. So all of this is done with three basic colors. So Mondo Chrysanthemum, one of the new stamps and dyes from Ellen Hudson, I painted, I made a background for it, and the painting was really easy. I just stamped them onto some watercolor paper, threw the color on, and then just started to play and let the colors mix as they wished, threw on a little bit of each of the colors, the card I fussy cut. I didn't use the dies for this and I just stamped that background and the colors in the outside panel are also painted with the same colors. Then I took the die set and I wanted to do something with the leaves because I really love the shape of the leaves. So I die cut out a whole bunch of them and again started just playing with the color, throwing on a couple different colors here and there and seeing what they did. And I like to play with them based on how thick the pigment is what pigment it's next to, and just make some mental notes for what happens when I use a particular color. Right now it is the fall season and I'm going to be doing a lot of painting of fall trees so it's helpful to know what kinds of colors I can get out of the paints that are in my palette. I also made a background and just kind of threw some colors on, sprayed here and there, and then I decided to take some saran wrap and lay it on as it was drying. And on regular watercolor paper, I wait for maybe an hour, hour and a half or so, and then you can peel it up. You'll get different effects based on how long you let it dry. But this particular one, when I ended up peeling it off, I got this beautiful texture underneath, which looked like leaves to me. And I also wanted to get more cards out of this rather than just one. So what I did was cut it in half and put it onto some card bases. And I stamped the thanks from the Totally Random Sayings, Volume 3. I love these totally random sayings because lots of them are really basic sayings. And then I added on some leaves, just used some dimensional adhesive to add some of those leaves that I painted. And I have enough leaves for a couple more cards. And one of the cards I made was with the Voices in My Head set. It's a new version of Voices in My Head with some fun sentiments. Hello, my name is Awesome. Seemed fun. I added leaves to it and the background is something I actually spilled watercolor paper on, so I decided to use it. And I made these little name tags, and they're, I've cut them to the size that our little plastic things are in my Toastmasters Club, and I'm gonna make name tags for everybody that says, hello, my name is awesome. Thought that would be fun. Next up is the So Cute Ornament and Snowman. I don't usually use dyes like this because I don't have felt, and I'm not gonna start collecting felt, but guess what I do have? I have watercolor supplies. So I want to start making ornaments, but I want to do them with watercolor. I'm going to show you how I made the ornament because I'm using the same stuff that you've already seen in this video, same colors and everything. I used the pokey tool after having cut my dies apart with my new snippers, finely owned snippers. I feel like a grown up now. I used to just use some pliers from the garage and now I have fancy snippers. And each one of my little die cut pieces, I'm just going to slather paint on. Same way as I did with everything else, just playing with it, seeing what happens with the color, what happens when I drop water in, what happens when I make the paint thicker, etc. And just having a good time with it. It kind of makes this almost an, a globe type of thing. But look what happens with that nickel azo. Is that not delicious or what? And that's gorgeous enough. Let's do a little replay close up to watch the nickel azo do its thing. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it just makes my heart happy to watch that paint move the way that it does. Only Nickel Azo seems to do it. So then I took these yarns, and they're called yarns, but they're more like threads. Now I have a whole bunch of them because I, I don't know, they weren't expensive, so I bought a whole bunch. And I don't know what to do with them, so please give me more ideas on what to do with them and how to store them. I need to know more about these. <laughs> so I made the little snowman the same way. Just his hat and his scarf and stuff were done with the colors that I was using. Next up, Little Squatch! Oh my gosh, so cute! 
And what I decided to do with him was make a little scene out of the two little Sasquatch buddies. And I stamped them together and put the trees in behind them. So I masked from the front to the back. And their bodies I started putting together with two colors. And I used two darker versions of what I've been playing with already for a specific reason. So I used some burnt sienna with Payne's blue gray for their bodies. And then I kind of threw in a little bit of, uh, I believe that was yellow ochre for their skin, just so I didn't have all dark colors in there. And then I decided to use the two colors that I've been using, the Aussie red gold and the French ultramarine blue in their hair because I wanted their hair to match the ground that I'm going to put underneath them because I'm going to use those colors for everything on the ground. And I thought it would be cool because Sasquatch hides, you know. I live in the Pacific Northwest and that's where Sasquatch lives, but nobody ever gets to see him because he's got good camouflage. And if his hair on his head is the same color as the grass on the ground, that's why we can't find him, right? Yeah, well, okay, I have my own theories on how these things work. But there you go. So I've added on now some color into the background in the same kind of crazy way. I love that watercolor is something you can be this playful with. The secret to getting it to move though is to have enough pigment and water on the paper. Don't get chintzy with it because then you'll end up with something that's kind of weak and it doesn't move. And if you get the colors on there and they're not moving around and blending, tilt your board or do a little spraying on it or something so that you end up with a surface that's got paint that's moving around on it. I used a little flicking mark with my brush so I could make some grasses at the top. And again, dropping in the nickel azo. Such a fun color. And if I find other colors that do that, I will definitely let you know. If you find other colors in the Daniel Smith line that do that, let me know because it just makes me happy. And I love when paint makes me happy. So I continued to put color in here until I was satisfied with what I was getting. I wanted some darker colors underneath of the Sasquatches. Sasquatch? What would be the plural of Sasquatches? I'm not sure that I've ever had to pluralize it because I've never had more than one Sasquatch in a big picture before. And for the trees on my little picture, I mixed some Aussie red gold with the French ultramarine blue to make a little bit of a green color so I could paint the leaves on the trees or the branches on the trees. And there's my finished little card. Really fun. And I'm going to be using this set again on Friday over on Ellen Hudson's channel. And I have it stamped in the same way without the trees, but just with the two little Sasquatches. And I would like for your ideas on what kind of scene I should put them with. I'm going to be doing that in a different medium. So leave me your comments. And here are all my finished cards. Lots of fun with this release. Also, starting tomorrow, I have an onslaught of videos coming your way five days in a row of holiday scenes. I know lots of you are prepping your Christmas cards, so links to all of those stamps are in the doobly-doo on my blog if you want to get them ahead before they run out. And that's about it. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Go make something beautiful. See you later. Bye-bye.